Previously on My Name is Darko. For the machine shop to thread the collar through here was between $500 and $900. I can buy a bike for that. Hello, and welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, we installed a 2008 ZX-10R swing arm to a 1994 ZX-7 frame. In this video, I'm going to attempt to install a 2008 ZX-10R shock and linkages to the 1994 ZX-7. I'll walk you through the steps and the problems I encountered along the way and what I did to resolve them. Let's dive in. But before we dive in, let me show you what made me pick the 2008 ZX-10R shock over the 1994 ZX-7. Okay, what we have here is a ZX-7 rear shock and the ZX-10 rear shock. Measurement from eyelid to eyelid on the ZX-7 is 35 centimeters ZX 10 33 and a half centimeters the amount of coil travel on the ZX 7 is 26 centimeters and the most is 20.8 centimeters on the ZX 10 The inside of the shackle, 32.41 on the ZX-7 and 30.41 on the ZX-10. That's going to be different. ZX10 dog bone, ZX7 dog bone. ZX10 R, it's says here 29.3 minus 10 centimeters is 19.3 centimeters from center to center. The ZX-7 is 28.6 minus 10 is 18.6 centimeters. By the looks of it, there isn't that much of a difference. The difference here is very minute, however, when it translates to the movement of the suspension, it's massive. The shock absorber brackets are 39.20, 39.20. They're the same. The ZX10 suspension arm measurements are from center of the hole to center of the hole. 103.79 millimeters ZX10 the ZX7 114.72 compared to side by side The ZX-7 is considerably bigger. I have a dilemma. 
Should I install the ZX7 or the ZX10 shock? The ZX7 shock is a direct replacement. The ZX10 shock would offer some benefits, but it would require some modifications. And at times like this, you have to weigh in your options. ZX10R shock weighs 8.7 pounds. The ZX7 shock weighs 11.1 pounds. Choosing the ZX10 shock over the original ZX7 was a no-brainer. The ZX10R shock is lighter and the obvious choice for anyone who wants to upgrade the suspension and get the most out of their bike. Okay, one of the problems that I knew already existed is the bottom shackle support. The bolt here, according to my precision instrument, 12 millimeters. The ZX10 bolt is 10 millimeters. Gonna have to machine a test bushing. Let's start by test fitting the components. The dot bones are going to be definitely the wrong length. The ZX10 shock is shorter and some comments say the ride will be rough. But honestly, I don't think anything on a high performance bike today will ride as rough as a 30 year old shock. The other concern is that the shock doesn't rub on any part of the frame. I would like to keep at least 5 millimeters of clearance between the shock and any part of the swing arm. Why is the shock touching the swing arm? I didn't have any problems the first 10 takes. Let's switch the bracket around and see if that makes a difference. Huh, go figure. The bolt holding the suspension arm to the frame is too short. A common recommendation is to have at least two full threads protruding above the face of the nut. My many years of weight savings has left me with a lot of bolts. I don't think anyone will know this is a Suzuki bolt. The bolt fits and it has a length needed. Just have to make sure it's an M10 with a 1.25 thread count. Cool. M10 bolt with 1.25 thread count. I believe this to be a leftover bolt from the R6. My wife's R6. We need to mark the length of the thread needed. This portion of the video, we should name thread cutting, has been sped up by 2000%. Yes, I'm that slow. That should be good enough. Let's mill two bushings, one for each side.
It has taken me one hour to mill the two bushings. And up to this point, this video has taken 40 hours. The original calculation allowed the bushing walls only to be 1.55 millimeters thick, which was too thin for my liking. So I decided to mill the two holes on the frame bracket by 0.5 millimeters each, which increased the wall thickness to two millimeters on the bushings. This gave me more confidence in the strength and durability of the bushings. Let's keep our fingers crossed. It's time to assemble everything for a test fit. After seven takes, everything fits as it should. Next, we're going to deal with the dog bones. Those dreaded dog bones. You may be wondering why I'm taking a video with the old suspension and swing arm. Well, the reason is, is I forgot to take one crucial measurement from the original setup. And I need that measurement to help me with the new setup. I will explain why in the next video, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button.